The peg, I think, correct me. Is always a arrives in the studio. Okay, I don't know why I'm talking like a cowboy, but here we go. Nike Pegasus 39, the workhorse indeed is back, back on track, 39th iteration. So cool. All right, I just love, I love, first of all, it's a simple name, Pegasus. It's not like, it doesn't have five names in the, in the, in the, t in the title, the model of the shoe. And then it's like one after the other after, so, oh man, okay. Now I'm just gonna geek out a little bit. Um, it's not out here, but I've got now, so this is a little, you know, been doing running shoe reviews for, well, now I know, because one of the first shoes I purchased, it's about 2018, I don't even know, the Peg 35. So now we've tested the 35, the 36, the 37, the 38, and the, so I don't, have I been doing it? But that doesn't make sense. Yeah, I don't even know. But I do know I, I the first one, it was, okay, I'm getting a little too excited. It was the Pegasus, oh my goodness. Did you know the first shoe I bought was the Peg Turbo? That was like, I just, where I went to a, a Nike outlet store at Mall of America in Minnesota and I said, I'm gonna start doing running shoe reviews and we're gonna start with this one. And I don't, you know, I just kind of sensed that this shoe was gonna do well and it did do well. The Nike Pegasus Turbo, which sadly has been discontinued. But then I got the Peg 35. Then I got the Baby Blues, the New Balance Beacon V1. Oh man, now I'm geeking out. Bottom line, we've been doing the pegs for a long time. And guess what? It feels like a peg. Neutral road running shoe. There it is, 28 in the heel. 18 in the forefoot, all right? Women's size eight, men's size nine on your screen and in my size. Get excited, everybody. We dropped the weight by about a half an ounce. I'm getting 8.6, okay? 8.6 right here, all right? That is awesome. It dropped about a half an ounce from in one iteration. That is good, good work there, Nike. I do appreciate that, all right? Moving on to that upper, it's just that not standard, but kind of classic engineered mesh that you're gonna find on the, I believe on the Peg 37, but definitely the Peg 38. Now, do remind me though, this fly wire technology, I thought it was gone and then maybe it came back anyway, but they're back. I don't, I thought they went away, the fly wire technology, which basically acts a little bit like a cage over the top of your foot, right there through the midfoot as you're lacing up, okay? So then just keep that in mind. Um, I don't dislike it, not saying I love it. It's just, it is what it is. It's how they do their lacing in the pet. But I, for some reason, I thought it went away. We're definitely gonna have to do a peg 35 to peg 39 evolution because I, I have all the shoes. I just gotta go find them in the archive somewhere. So overall, lockdown is solid, eight out of 10 in overall score. Okay, let's do the heel counter now. All right, I do remember now, I wish maybe for, it's good, it's good. It's a good heel count. You feel secure, you feel locked in. Maybe just a little more forgiveness, a little more, uh, not quite as rigid. It's not rigid, but it's a little soft, just a smidge softer. Maybe because of some of the ASIC shoes I've been testing, like the Evo Ride and the Glide Ride as of late, the Noosa. I'm just wanting maybe just a smidge more in the collar and the heel counter, a little more forgiveness there. But overall, I'm pleased, not crazy high, on the breathability scale, not crazy high, all right? And, oh yeah, did I already say this? Fully gusseted tongue, all right? Did I cover it, did I cover it? Moving on to the React Foam. It's that thermoplastic elastomer, okay? And it's classic. It's clat now, my gut, and this is why we need to do the battle. Actually, let's do the thumbs first. My gut is telling me, feels to me a little softer than the 38. Might just be the same, exact, I don't know, 
Yeah, feels just a smidge, not much, but a smidge, which I like, okay? I should also mention, of course, there's the air zoom bag in the midsole, okay? The classic air zoom bag, but let's do the durometer. Let's zero this out. Here we go. Any guesses before I go? Hit pause. Guess your durometer. All right, I'm going to go, I'm going to go like 49. All right, 49, this is always hard to find the right spot. So the, the geometry of the midsole changed a little bit as well. Okay, that's 39. Okay, did I say 49? Wow, 43. Okay, let me just keep going, hold on. Oh, it's, ooh, there's, there's not a lot of, you gotta try and find a, a flat surface, 43. So maybe it's right in the ballpark of what I like. Anyway, all right, we'll go with, we'll go with 43, all right? So there you have it for the midsole. I was pleased, just a classic daily trainer feel underfoot, all right? Nothing crazy to write home, nothing's changed much. I, I will say that much as far as how the shoe felt in the testing, all right? Carbon rubber in the heel, blown rubber in the forefoot, carbon rubber in the heel, can you see that? Blown rubber in the forefoot, and just a smidge too much, which is why we're in the sixes. I, I preferred, I think I said this last year, I do remember, just, just a little less. Let's, let's just, you know, drop the weight a little bit for the, ooh, the Pegasus 40, that's gonna be exciting. But uh, just take a little bit out of the midfoot there, I just don't know if it's totally necessary. Fit, true to size, okay, I'll, the peg, I think, correct me, is always a smidge narrow, right? It always just feels pretty snug, pretty secure. And frankly, let me just remind, yeah, like you can feel the arch a little bit underfoot, which I don't always love. Uh, yeah, if you need a little more arch support, but I it just, it feels, you feel quite, not constrained, but it just, you know, you're not swimming around. I have found in the Pegasus lineup. Comfort, there you go. Um, I think, yeah, oh, I was trying to remind you, it's, it's the collar. That's why we're a little low. It's the collar in the heel counter. Just soften it up a smidge next year. Positives and drawback. Positive is the, what I believe felt like a little softer midsole ride, okay? And that heel counter is my drawback. 500 plus for the durability. I think they, um, the React foam has always historically lasted for quite a while. All right, doesn't break down nearly as quick as some of Nike's other foams. All right, there you have it. How would I use this shoe? Classic daily trainer. I wouldn't use it for easy day. I wouldn't use it for tempo. You could, you could. I wouldn't use it for long. It's just a classic workhorse, you know? Get those six to 10 mile runs in day after day at your, you know, steezy pace. You know, not even ste steady to steezy pace out there. Pound and ground, price point, 130, just classic, all right? 130 for a daily trainer, that's where we like it. Other shoes to buy, I'm gonna say, think about, if you wanna pinch pennies, Pegasus 38, all right? On Cloud Monster, Gel Cumulus 24, and then maybe, maybe the Axon 2. I tried to, uh, tried to put as many shoes on the screen that like, are similar. Axon 2 might be a little bit of a stretch, but it is affordable, I believe around $100, can't beat that, Saucony Accent 2, and most of them are listed down below in the description. There you have it, Nike Pegasus 39. All right, quick specs on your screen, soak it in. Good job, good job, one more time. All right, 10 millimeter drop. Okay, engineered mesh with flywire technology in that midfoot React foam, and the 130, interesting, we went up. By I think 0.1, okay? So I think last year's full review score, I'll link to that upper right hand corner. We'll try to remember or in the description, Nike Pegasus 38 full review, 50 mile full review. I believe it was a 7.1 something. So we went up. So I mostly, I'd say because of the weight drop, um, what else mostly because of the weight drop? Not much else changed on the shoe, but that's a, that's exciting. That's exciting. So good work there, Nike. Um, just pushing the ball down the court. All right, there you have it. 7.28 for the 50 mile full review score. Comment of the day, question of the day. Here you have it. Living in Austin, this is coming from the question about uh, how do you train in the summer heat? All right, so here we go. Austin, Texas, thanks for tuning in. It's already been summer here for two months. The best strategy I found though is getting out there early in the day, around 7 a.m. I know not everyone can do it, but getting the run in and breaking a sweat to kick off the day has been game changing for me during the summer, not only to avoid the heat, but also start off on a strong foot 
mentally. I love that. That and watching SJD videos when I'm back, of course. That's awesome. Thanks for tuning in after your run. Maybe as you're getting a little uh, rehydration going, you can turn on that. That's what, all right, tip of the day. Watch this YouTube channel as you're multitasking. Making din breakfast, making dinner, you know, foam rolling, um, riding the subway, however you do your thing. That's how I would recommend, you know, just I'm all about efficiency on this earth. Question of the day, if you could have been the first to discover one spot on earth, which spot, landmark, location would you choose? Hmm? I'm always a little, I, I wouldn't, I don't like, I'm always intrigued, all right, I'm intrigued by caves. I don't really love caves, but I'm intrigued by cave systems. Like what, like under the earth for miles and miles and miles. I don't even know where the biggest cave system is in the world, I forget, is it Mexico? I can't remember, but that fascinates me. Anyway, which spot in the world would you, and it could be historically based, like a, you know, one of the seven wonders of the world. It could be a waterfall. It could be in the ocean. All right, think outside the box. There you go. That's the question. And why? And why that spot? We'll toss it, of course, to the Pegasus 38. Peg 38, right there, right there, right there. All right, seek beauty. Work hard. Love each other. See you tomorrow.